As one story ends, the next begins. Three words to describe sloth, and that's kind of difficult. Flamboyant. Strong. Determined. Warm. That he's complex. Big smile. Winner. Technical. Proud to be from Malmö. Self-confident. Incredible. Great man. Weak. Strong. Brilliant. Cool. Malmo, the third largest metropolis in Sweden, vibrant and cosmopolitan, with an economy that's regenerated in recent times. The city stands as a monument to the new Sweden. It's a city notable in football terms for Malmo reaching the European Cup final of 1979. Within Malmo lies Rosengard. This area has a million stories to tell, but one in particular stands out. This is where Sweden's greatest footballer was brought up, where his first steps on a path to greatness were taken. This is the story of Zlatan, of who he is, of what he is, and of where he came from. Rosengard is one of the underprivileged areas with a lot of uh, different problems. There are high un unemployment, there is a, a big diversity when it comes to nationalities and people, many of the uh, people living there are foreign born. So, of course, it's one of the city districts that uh, you can read about in the media with all the problems. And, of course, uh, also in that way, the, the story of Ibrahimovic is the contrasting uh, the other media stories around Rosengard. Rosengard is it's one of the poorest areas in, in Malmö and in, in Sweden uh, and it's got a very high level of immigrants living there um, and very high rates of unemployment also uh, so I mean socially it's one of the uh, hardest or most complicated areas to live in. There's several different parts of, of Rosengård and the part where he came from is not the worst one by far, but still it's bad enough if you have uh, a low social status and maybe no education. Slatan himself has not much of an education, so he makes his success through his skills with his feet and his talent for seeing what the game should be like. How I be on a using the hotel is a mess. Just don't if Alla känner och alla här. När man går på gatan kan man bara stanna till vid någon kvitta och gammal hon eller han är. Så snackar man med, med den personen. Till exempel jag kan gå ut på balkongen och kasta ner en kyrgelöp till en av smågna och gå och handla mjölk. Springer de mig iväg och handlar mjölk och kommer tillbaka. Så det är många, på många sätt man, man kan förklara varför man trivs med. There's, I think in every city there is a, a, a environment that is not so good at each other, but there are, there are quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of uh, areas in Rosengård, which is really good and really good people and so on. So you shouldn't mark it, I think, as a, a, a bad a bad uh, environment. You, maybe Rosengard is not a ghetto in, in, in but but it's, it's 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 certainly near something like that. And he lived outside Sweden. He lived in the middle of Malmö, but he was 19 years when he first watched Swedish tally for the first time. He didn't know anything about the traditional Swedes. He lived in a very tough neighborhood. You know, uh, later he met guys who said, nice to meet you and things like that. But in, in the words, Slotan grew up, you have to show, no, look at me, hey, you know, you have to be tough. 
And that was, I think, his first lesson to survive, you have to be tough. He lived first with his mother, uh, with his five siblings, and his mother was a cleaning lady and he, sometimes he hit him with his wooden spoon and sometimes uh, his mother hit him so hard that this wooden stone broke and then he had to go buy another one as it was his fault that he... <laughs> he, he, he uh, but, but, and then... Um, the mother, though, because of uh, certain um, circumstances, lost custody over him. He moved to his father. Now come mom, so you can. Wait a minute. Ring to his mobile. He loved his father, he loves his mother as well, but um, back in those days his father was sort of traumatized over the Balkan war. He was drinking heavily and, uh, and I think he didn't even see Slot and he was just sitting there at the tally, you know, seeing the latest news about the war and, and were drinking. So, so Slata was out all day, nicking bicycles and, and, you know, he was a little thief back then. Uh, he is a good uh, bike stealer. He was, when he was young, he stole some bikers and he made With some. him, with him. Not <laughs> that with me, with him. He used to run good from the cops when he stole bikes and, you know. He was a very fast guy. Yes. Yeah, he must trust uh, in himself and he learned that from Rosengod because all, all the people here in, in, this, in this place uh, trust about themselves and uh, after that, Others can do something uh, in the future. Uh, he's very important to us uh, because uh, we look after him. He is a good player. Maybe we can say a lot of people in Rosengod, uh, there's Aleskan, uh, love uh, Zlatan because he is a special player. Uh, when he was asked about uh, the, the travel that he did from this under uh, uh, this problematic Rosengård to buying one of the big villas down by the sea. Uh, he was asked uh, what did that travel mean to him. And he, he looked into the camera and he said that Slatan uh, may leave Rosengård, but Rosengård never leaves Slatan. You can see that just the fact that w when he came out in the professional world um, from Sweden, where he was only known as Slatan by first name, he changed so he would have Ibrahimovic on his shirt, uh, on his jersey, because he wanted to honor his background. Uh, being um, from a Muslim background, being from very, very low key, uh, very low status background, he really wants to show all the kids at Rosengård and Malmö in general that if I could do it, you can do it. Football in this city and in many other cities, I mean, the people who make it, makes it the best careers are the people who come from kind of tough backgrounds. They have to fight a lot. And also I think in his case, he got kicked out of his house a lot. And outside his building, there was a pitch. And of course, he spent most of the time there. So if, I mean, a, 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 if he was from a safer family where he could stay at home and watch TV, maybe he wouldn't be out of the pitch so much. So, I mean, I think that is a really, I mean, you should, you've been to Rosengård and you see it's actually, there is a lot of spaces for young people, especially if you like to play football. It was not easy for him, uh, as, as, as I understand it. Uh, I mean, obviously you should ask him, but, but I mean, uh, as we understand it, he, he had to fight for himself and, and it was not that, that easy neighborhood to, to, uh, to, uh, to be raised in. And, and that, that made him fight and, and he used the talent he had, I think, and that's, that's what made him the great star he is. I'd say that coming from Rosengård, one of the things you really need is street wisdom. Um, because that is what makes you, enables you to be someone there. Uh, and if you want to make a social network where you can grow either if it's sports or it's um, a business or whatever, uh, you need to have that. And in the tougher parts, you're taught the hard way. And I would say that Slatan is, he's no angel, he's no saint. He's probably done quite a few things that most people wouldn't be proud of. But then again, that is part of what made him so tough that he could go all the way to the top. So the background makes all the difference, I think. Honestly, I, I didn't know that it was so, so hard for him uh, at, at, at home, which I have read in the, the book. 
mm. today. And uh, we never discuss it, but um, he he managed to 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 hide it on the the the, the, the practice uh, in a way. So uh, I was so always o o open open to my players to to if they have some problems, I wanted them to come to me and, and talk about it, but. Uh, we didn't talk about uh, the problem he, he, he had at that time. Zlatan was honest, fun, creative in his language, um, and, and, and with a lovely smile, so he had everything the camera needed. I mean, he was a great character for a film. Do you need any No, it's been okay. We can miss for many fans. Du många sekvenser du lättar och trixar och leker. Händer inte att de blir lite förbannade nästan när du lurar bort dem? <laughs> Nej, det är... jag bara skojar lite med dem ibland. Så här som kom. <laughs> Okej, okay, jättebra Zlatan. That's the personal side and of course then amazing skills, techniques. And, and, and of course that was a great combination for us. The first time I met him, and then I was really nervous, of course, because I really wanted to, to, to write this book. Uh, 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 and I was nervous meeting Slatan, but uh, he didn't really see me at all, I thought. You know, he was talking about other things. And then suddenly he asked me the first question, and he said to me, David, do you believe in God? You know, I was nervous, what kind of question is that? And I started to, and I said, maybe this guy is really religious or he wanted someone to, to share his beliefs. So I don't know what to say. I, I, I don't know, Slatan. I said, I don't know if I believe in God. And then he looked me with that Slatan blink and he said, then you don't believe in Slatan either. <laughs> and I said, yes, I do believe. I do believe in you, Slatan. And then he said, no, because God sent me to Rosengord to play football. And I thought, this guy, I mean, he's absolutely crazy. He's megalomaniac. I mean, he thinks he's God or something. And then he just blinked his eyes, just turned me on. So that was his, the first meeting with him. <laughs> father and mother didn't have any money you know he didn't have this nice clothes he has been been talking and writing a lot about uh, coming to the richer uh, areas uh, because he went to a, a school where there were rich kids and he couldn't buy the same clothes as, as them he didn't have the, the new shoes his uh, colleagues in the Malmö F have to have this you know football shoes who cost 2000 with kangaroo shin I mean he's bought his uh, uh, shoes for 59 crowns, you know, in this <laughs> food store. I mean, as a teenager, you want to fit in. <laughs> and he felt that he didn't. And that, I think, was quite hard for him. One, one day he, he showed me, I showed me, I mean, you were out, I said, uh, when you were a kid. So w what was it like when you come home in, in the evening? He said, come, David. And, and he, we walked to the fridge and he opened it and I was, you know, amazed because it was full. The, the fridge was all these Italian delicatesses all over. And he said, you know, David, it's still like this. If not, my fridge looks like this. You know, I get anxiety, I get anger. And then he remember his childhood when he come home and, and he, he, in the anger and hunger was beating him in, and he uh, thought the same thing every time, made me something. And then he said to me, some days there were, I was hungry as a wolf and there were only bears in the fridge. And that David is a pain in that I will never forget. He felt poor and he felt different um, in a way that can be really hard for, for a teenager. In, in the early childhood, I mean, Nobody ever noticed him. I mean, his mother was, you know, occupied with his work and the, all his other brothers and sisters and his father with the war. So, so, and, and if, if any grown up saw him, they thought, I mean, what is this guy gonna steal or something? They didn't see him in any positive way. The only place where they sometimes saw him in a, in a positive way was on the football ground. So I think football was his, the, the first way for him to be seen in a positive way. A lot of things that made him great is still there. And of course, lo part of it is, of course, the f this kind of the social revenge. I'm going to show them. That's very strong in him. 
And I think that's very strong in others, like, like Zidane, or you can talk about other big footballers. They have this kind of social revenge too. He's, in one way, he's this tough, very secure guy, but deep inside, he's still this insecure kid from the ghetto. Who, so he has this insight, and I think he uses it, this insecurity and this anger that his childhood uh, gave him. You know, this anger I want to show them. They think that I'm just this little, you know, immigrant kid, but I, one day, I will show them. He uses that anger and that insecurity who is, which is still inside him. And it's we and them, you know, and, and the we are kind of the people below, you know. And, and you can see now in France, you can see all the, the rap artists and all the kids from the suburbs, they love Zlatan. And I think that's really interesting because we, it's, it's exactly the same feeling here in Sweden. Everybody who has an immigrant background, who has to fight a little bit more to get into this society, they love him because he's their hero. I mean, the middle class, we look down on immigrants, especially people living in this kind of neighborhoods. So even if it's not a slot and word, I mean, he felt immediately stigmatized of coming from that background. It's the feeling that you treated him as this little ghetto kid. You know, if you go, I think Slatan is so nice to be with, but, but if you, tr if you m pretend to be upper class and, you know, and try to fool him and look down at him, I mean, he remember mm. and he get angry. Otroligt mjuk och fin kille. Hans, hans bakgrund gör ju att han kanske har den här mer tuffa och kaxiga attityden. Det är en slags mask eller ett försvar för honom mot, mot han kanske ser angrepp både från höger och vänster och men vi pratar ju mycket med honom och det, det är en fantastiskt fin kille va. Ja, jag känner ibland att jag kan vara lite så kax. Men det är, alla har sin kaxighet men alla har sina gränser. Jag kan få gå för långt ibland. Men det är, det är inte så som folk tror att jag är så kaxig i det att jag fattar ingenting. Jag har mina gränser. Jag kan även vara ödmjuk ibland. Jag väljer oftast att vara mest kaxig, för annars kan de trycka ner mig lätt, tycker jag. When the fathers, uh, he had beat a, a guy in, in, in the club, and the fathers wrote this list that Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, don't belong in Malmö FF. And I think that's incredibly important for him. If you must imagine, he come there to this club with all these middle class kids, and he didn't have money, he didn't have the right way to talk, and then the fathers wrote a list that he didn't want him in the club. And that was important, of course, and you can deal with this in, in all kinds of ways. You can just quit. I mean, I don't care about these brats, or, or you can try to be like them. But he uh, understands that he will fight and show them. And I think that's an important uh, moment in his kingdom. para ninguna receta que sirva para todos. Yo creo que eso, pues como en todo en la vida, cada, cada entrenador o cada persona que recibe este éxito, que participa de este éxito, pues muchas veces pues depende de, de su propio carácter, de su forma de ser, cada uno lo vemos de una forma, su formación, su experiencia, pues todo eso que marca a cada uno de nosotros, claro. Bueno, pues un sentimiento de... ...de que nuestro fútbol, el fútbol español había salido reforzado de cara a la sociedad española... ...que la consideración que, 
que se tenía del fútbol pues había aumentado y había una corriente de simpatía en todo el mundo, en toda la gente, en toda la sociedad nuestra, que era muy importante. Y al mismo tiempo, pues que no sé si modestamente, también sirvió como un buen ejemplo de unos jugadores que, que de cara a nuestros jóvenes y con. Pues yo creo que ha sido, le ha servido como ejemplo para todos ellos. Y entonces para nosotros, los que llevamos tantos años alrededor de este deporte, pues eh, era un sentimiento de, de, de orgullo, de, de, de haber hecho algo, algo importante. Det är en av de största talangerna, kanske den största jag någonsin har sett komma fram. Han har egentligen allt. He wasn't stand out at that time so much and uh, he he came to to Malmo when he was uh, 12 I think. And uh, I was the coach for the under 16 team and uh, so you you work with your players and uh, then okay someone uh, could tell you about the player, but uh, I didn't uh, heard about him or have, have seen him before I, I, I got him in the, at the team. I think he was not ready by then. He, he, I think we, and he was not a, a fantastic talent uh, on, on at very early age. He, he, he grew uh, from, from 15, 16 to, to, to 18, 19 uh, very, very fast. And there were actually a few talents that were considered to be better than him in the early days. But but uh, 18, 19, he really uh, turned out to be a, to be a, a super talent, and and, uh, and then nothing could could stop him. And his his mindset was was there from from very early on, I would say. Jag gillar till exempel djävla, det vet ju hela Sverige nu. Jag gillar djävla, så ibland istället för passa djävla, så visst kan en lagkamrat bli sur, men det det är sånt som händer det. Det är inget, utan det är rätt kul. För att man ska vara kul. Och rätt kul är det är rätt långt att spela egentligen. My thoughts about young player is that uh, they are not finished. Like they, they must work with everything. But uh, he was exceptional technical player. So that I could I couldn't teach because he was so good at the technical skills. Slatan was a good player, but not so physical, but he's a fantastic technical. Okay, what's your, what's your uh, style of play? Technical. Technical? Because you're very big? Yeah, but I wear a technical fit. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I, I think it's the technical come from, from the feel when he live home on on, on uh, Rosengård and they have maybe three times they have practices in the club and after that they go home and, and also with the football. His life was uh, was number one football. Number two perhaps uh, school, I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, and family of course, but number one was football, so I think he, he, he when he could, 24-7, he, he, he played football, wherever it, it was, if it was outside in, in, in the yard, uh, outside uh, their apartments and so on, he played football everywhere, and that, that one of the reasons I think he's been a good player because he has done so many training hours for himself then uh, he, he, he bec became so good as he, he is. He loved football, the best friend in the world when I think uh, from, from he was born in 81 and to the, today it's a, it's a family and the, the boys in the family and his wife and after that it's a football. <laughs>
well, one day he, he came and he, he wanted to leave. But I think it, it, it would be a shame for, for such a young talent player to, to leave Malmo. It has been, uh, it was been fault for me as a coach to, to say to him, okay, leave. So I took my amateur psychology and talked to him. Uh, Ola and my second coach uh, took the practice that time and we stood at uh, the, the field and, and talked for yeah, one hour, one and a half about why and uh, yeah and so on. So yeah, the next day he was at the, the, the training. I think we have a, a, a respect for each other and I, I could tell him it's not good to do that or that and he respect that and I, I also res respect uh, him uh, because he could tell me uh, why should I do that and uh, I want to do that I found I find it better to do it like this way and and yeah okay do it that way and we see what's happened he's always liked strong authoritative men and he was of course brought up in an area where men were supposed to be authority and 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 uh, so but but it's important for him he likes authority strong man but to have to see him you know and he said i want to be a strong leader myself but i want to understand that players have to be different and they must be allowed to be different is that where it went wrong with guardiola yeah he wanted all the players treated the same yes 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 and and uh, there was a different word for him i th i think in in barcelona he just felt again as this immigrant kid who come to malmo with this mid well-behaved middle-class kid who didn't understand him and i think there was the same story all over and uh, guardiola didn't understand him and he couldn't really cope with that kind of of, of character I remember now again in Italy we what the training camp we we played Verona uh, at that time and they come with a under 17 I think and we were under 16 and we played so well that game uh, in the first half half I think I played this player Tony Flieger and the, in the second high, half I played Slater and they have a magnif magnificent uh, show, those both players. And Slatan uh, was incredible at that game. And it ended that uh, before full time, Verona leave the field. So good was we. <laughs> so that's one of the games. I think it's, it's a very important step for the career for Slatan. He, he can go to, I think it's maybe Roma and uh, Arsenal or uh, when he was 17 or 18. Uh, he was 17, let's not forget, you know. And I wanted uh, to see, uh, to give him a trial with the first team and uh, he turned it down. He said to me, I don't make trials. You take me or you don't take me. You know, I was a young boy, but I had never seen playing. And it shows what uh, Zlatan is about, you know, uh, uh, confidence in his qualities, a kind of uh, charismatic belief, and uh, that explains as well why uh, he made the career he made. But he stay in the club, he stay and play for Malmo in the second division. And I think it's maybe 15 goals this season when you drop down and come back again to the the first division in Sweden. So I, I, I think it was a very important step in the career when he stayed in Malmö and played football for the highest level for his, his career. Young players, they, 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 they don't set up uh, different goals for them. They are they are uh, already at the big clubs and so on. So, but I think Slatan has always have some some goals in, for him in the future and and step by step taking them. 
Yeah, he was a, he was a very good player. That was his first real season. Uh, we played second division. Uh, I mean, one of the few years we ever did it, and, and he was of course uh, he was not one of the, the stable uh, established players in that sense, but he could really make a difference in that league. Of course, he go up to the first division and. Also, we come drop down and we come back again with a, with a senior team, the first team here in, in Malmö. Everybody talking about Slatan in Malmö. I remember his, his first his first game here uh, at, at home when he scored scored twice and we, we did 2-0 against one of the top teams from Stockholm. That was really one of the memories from, from his career here. So happy after the game and confirmed to to me and Johnny and talking about the game, it's, it was a, it's a fantastic uh, story when we, he was 13 years old and we have see him all the way up to the, to the, to the success story with Malmö. Vi, alltså, vi har, vi har fått ett antal kan jag säga, samtal med honom och det är inte en, två eller tre, det är många alltså. Ja, I stort sett alla länder. Det eh, kan vara agenter, det kan vara talangscouter och så, men de har fått samma svar allihopa och han är inte ett salu. Jag har ju tagit det här jobbet för jag vill försöka och, och lyckas med det här nu, att vi ska gå upp i allsvenskan. Då kan man inte, även om du kommer massor med miljoner och erbjuds en spelare, inte nu. Because we knew we couldn't keep him, so it was not a big issue for us. And of course, uh, we needed the money as well. I think so. It was. Uh, it, I think we, it was a good deal for 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 all parties there. There's a funny story from about 2001 or something when he was just going to be transferred to Amsterdam to play for Ajax, his first professional club. And I was working for Swedish TV for it and made a um, piece where a small kid won a contest on our website to make his own TV interview with Slatan. Of course, Slatan was not a world famous hero by then, but he was world famous throughout Malmö. And this small kid sees Slatan coming out, Slatan sees him, and Slatan is so respectful to this kid. He says, hello, I'm Slatan, how are you doing? They sit down in front of the cameras, and the kid's first question is not, how can you be such a good player that you would think from a kid six years old? Instead he says, why do you get so many red and yellow cards? And Slatan, being a star, maybe he would be offended. But no, he just laughs his heart out and says, well, maybe I should just chill a bit. And he really liked that kid. And it's shown out through the interview. <laughs> Ronaldo was his idol from, uh, I, I remember we were at uh, Milan. And we were looking for the uh, Fiorentina against Inter Milano and Ronaldo played a game in San Siro. Fortunately Ronaldo scores two goals, I think Inter won 2-0 and, I'm, and that was happiness for, for Zlatan to see his idol scoring two goals. And he said to, to Johnny, Johnny. I will play on this stadium. And uh, he says, I'm going to be here one day. Five years later, we play in Juventus and they play in San Siro, so it's fantastic. He wanted to, br to be better and better, and that, that's one of the keys t to his success, I think. He's always had goals, and that's good. I, I think it's a success story with Slatan, his ambitions. His He's, he he come to to uh, when we have some. It's uh, it's important to say it's very good in school, but he's said to I I go from the school and I will play football now, and he also I will be the best player in the world. Slatten är ju ett man ska inte säga närheten av problem bara nu. Men han har en kaxig attityd och samtidigt så vi. Vi får acceptera lite av hans förhållande kanske. Men samtidigt så börjar han väl komma in i det här att han ska hitta sin plats i laget här. Han är liksom inte stjärnan än. Han tror att han är det. Och men om man förstår att han tror det ibland i och med att tv-tidningar fans hosar upp det. 
Jag vet att han kan stå och hålla bollen i luften ute vid hörnflaggan så är han ju nöjd med Maradona. Det är tre andra på plan som kan gå ut och hålla den i luften vid hörnflaggan. Jag tror att han var, innan han verkligen delivered all the, all the results och all the, all, all the fantastiska saker på den plan. Jag tror att han försökte att använda sin konfidens och till en viss del var han över. Uh, and considered him to be above the other uh, the people that were around him. And I think, I think to some extent that is uh, disturbing some people, uh, especially in, in, a, in a society like the Swedish one, where you're supposed to be very even to everybody, and, and it's, it's a very uh, in that that uh, that specific mindset that we have here. I think. <laughs> Han är jävligt egoistisk också. Det finns ju massor med lägen när, när vi springer oss fria där Zlatan helt enkelt inte ser det. Där en enkel passning skulle innebära en jättemålchans. Men att han är egoistisk betyder också att han vågar göra de här lite farligare grejerna. Vilket han misslyckas med ibland, men när han lyckas då, då kan det hända vad som helst. Då kan han göra mål från ingenting. Mohamed Ali was the, the love of his father. You know, when they had this good time together, they were not certainly not watching Swedish telly. They were watching old videos of Mohamed Ali and George Foreman and all things. I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm fat, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. And I think he immediately loved that attitude. You know, the Mohamed Ali attitude is absolutely opposite to the traditional Swedish attitude. We have to be humble, you know, and don't say, but Mohamed Ali was just coming here and say, I'm the greatest. I will be the youngest heavyweight champion in history. Slaughter thought that was something that uh, spoke to him. There is a feeling when you score a goal. It's hard to describe. You lose yourself. It's an explosion of emotions. You can't control it. Thousands cheering with you in the stadium. Millions worldwide. You've made it happen. Now, score in the Premier League. That's special. The Barclays Premier League. The most exciting league on the planet. Exclusive on BN Sport. Jag har bestämt mig för en grej, att jag ska ha en Diablo, en bil, Diablo. Det är en Lamborghini. Det är, om jag blir proff så är det ett måste att jag ska ha den. En lila Diablo. Lila, glänsig metallik. Det är ändå en dröm. Så ska det stå på registreringsbilden. Toys, Lexus, Pranks. Jag remember when we we flew to Amsterdam when he signed his contract with Ajax. And we flew out and flew back together and we went with him when he checked to find his new house or he got his new sponsored cars and, and, and you know, he, he could have whatever he wanted. And then on the plane back, he showed me he had five, five uh, Ajax t-shirts or, or shirts and he, he got them for free. And he was sitting in the plane counting, oh, this must be shirts for like 5,000 crowns, you know? <laughs> he was still amazed by that he got for free something worth, you know, which is now not even two seconds of blinking his eyes on the pitch, you know? <laughs> but at that moment, it, well, he was still in this moment of shifting identity from being a very poor boy to being someone, in, you know, who can rich forever. It's kind of a very interesting moment. <laughs> 
Še skosti, da fo bo komino velja, da bi bilo re. Ma povenja se. Of course, it, it means, for, for a kid from that uh, upbringing, it means a lot. It means that he has succeeded in life. But, but I think it's, it's more uh, uh, that we value him as a, as a great player. I think, he, I think it's important for him that, that there's not other people who earn money on him. He wants to be paid as much as he's worth, and I think that's important for him. He is uh, he's a guy of competition, and, and when you compete, you compete about everything. So, of course, then the competition is to earn most and make the most money. It's not because of what he wants to use the money for something, it's just because it's fun to be better paid than other players and make more money. It's, it's kind of a stupid, boyish competition, not so interesting, I think. But it's kind of it's normal, and I also think that it, uh, he he feels and that a lot of people try to make money out of him, and then he said, "Okay, if you want to make money, I want to make money." So it's kind of so that's kind of that's the the fight he's in. Malmo, of course, I uh, think he's uh, one of their, uh, their sons because he, he has uh, put Malmo on the map, so to speak. He is a, he's a living hero in Malmo and he's, he's very much loved and admired and, and we follow the teams that Slatan plays in. Normally I will go for Barcelona, but on Tuesday I'm, I'm on, when they meet Barcelona I will be for, for pa Paris. So that's kind of, I think that's the, the feeling a lot of people have. He's the big ambassador of, of Malmö FF and one of the great players uh, of all times here since, even though he didn't play uh, very much in first division here, he was very young when he, when he left the club, but he's, he's the biggest star that we ever raised here. So of course he's very important and also financially uh, since we sold him to, to Ajax and then every time he changes clubs we also get uh, some cash, so it, it, very, very important that he's very connected to Malmö and Malmö FF and makes makes our club even more famous, I think, in, in Europe. He's, today it's bigger than Björn Borg and Ingmar Sachs. So it's important person in, in Malmö and also in whole Sweden. We uh, live in a time when a lot of uh, discussions are around city branding and city marketing and so on. If you're not seen, you, you doesn't exist today. So of course, uh, uh, a city that can be linked to, to a brand, because Zlatan Ibrahim is, is really a brand, uh, is good value for that. And also, I know that the travel agencies uh, in Sweden could see that uh, when he moves, uh, they can see a bigger interest uh, for going from Milan through the years there. Today you make a city trip to, to Paris and you link it to, to looking at football. So of course it's a, it's a value. I think uh, he, he recognizes uh, obviously that th this is where he's coming from. Uh, this is his, his own neighborhood. He, he seems to always would like to return here. Uh, he bought this big house here. He has his family here, his roots here. So I think it, it's important to him. However, of course, now he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, a global person traveling everywhere and living everywhere in, in many places. But I think he will always come back to Melbourne. <laughs> I mean, Slatan is the biggest icon we ever had in Sweden. I mean, Slatan is, is, is uh, so, so what Swede thinks, I mean, there's a lot of people who admire him, love him, live for him. And then, of course, there's the people who hate him. I mean, they're racist, of course. And, and there are other things, the things that he has, hasn't had this right attitude, that it's not Swedish, you know. It's, but he, he concerns us, you know. We never... I mean, even if you compare to Björn Borg or so, you never have a, such a big star in Sweden. You know, I, I, I travel the world a lot as a filmmaker and my films travel too, so I, I, I've been to all continents over the last years and, and wherever I go and I say I'm from Malmo, people would say Slatan Ibrahimovic. And of course, it, there is no one else from this city who has kind of that brand and and I mean of course that's that's extremely cool I can go in a taxi in Managua Central America Nicaragua or in in South Korea or you know New Zealand wherever and it's it's Latin Ibrahimovic
Zlatan has become part of the Malmö identity. Um, Malmö has itself come from a hard situation. It used to be a working man's city. Now it has gone through a hard transformation to become a service city, um, and advanced in, in education and everything. And having been able to transform is something of what Zlatan has done as well. I mean, we come from Malmö. We can do. We can be stars. That's part of the Zlatan heritage, I would say. If you're interested in football and you're young in Malmö, you know about Zlatan Court. It's a significant mark because it also shows uh, that uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is a part of Malmö, but it's also a part of the identity of Rosengård. Det är väl lite speciellt för att han har ju växt upp här och sen så är det ju hans plan så tycker jag faktiskt att han har gjort något bra för att kanske någon annan vill vara som han och spela här. Så jag tycker att det är faktiskt speciellt. Jag vill bli som Zlatan för att han, han kan spela och han har gjort beskreta i över 10, jag står 20, 20 meter. För att han skjuter bra, han kan göra bra, så beskreta och sånt. Och vila här för att han spelar för vår landslag. Zlatan, är du hero? Yes, det är jag. Why? Eh, han är bra. Han har bra eh, taktik. Bra bollkontroll. Och, yeah. För att han spelar bra. Han har bra kontroll. Han skjuter i mål bra. Han rivlar bra. Så. Zlatan is the first real success story. So he shows us the new Sweden, the Sweden, the new Sweden rising. For many kids, he is a role model in that way. He, that shows that um, if you really want something, you can do it. And uh, uh, the travel that he's done in sports and in his social position is, of course, a, a long travel. He, he's got great importance also for my generation who I mean we all grew up in a mixed Sweden with lots of different cultures and he's been like I mean the front person of this generation Ja, vad fan blev jag sålt för? Jag blev sålt för 82,5 eller 6 miljoner Det blir på valutan Öka valutan kan bli sålt för 90 miljoner Mamma fick reda på tvn. De hade visat en bild på mig där tv och kan inte så bra svenska. Så hon trodde nog att det hade hänt med mig. Så ging hon mig i panikslag ändå. Vad va har hänt med det? Det är ingenting. Jag har blivit söld till Ajax. Va, men så blev hon gröta glad för min skull. Så kom jag hem. Fick jag stå och kram. Så hon är glad. Jag kommer kännas lite annorlunda, men jag kommer få sätta var mig själv. Jag ska inte förändra mig i ett dugg. Utan det gäller bara då att vara försiktig med den ekonomiska biten. Men min personlighet och det, det, det ska vara som vanligt. Jag recognize him, men jag ser också en väldigt annan person, of course. Han har grown a lot. Han är väldigt intresserad av things around him. He's he's uh, he's a grown-up uh, and a very established person. He has experienced a lot uh, over these 10, 11 years since he, since he left here. And of course, I see I see the boy in him when I meet him, but I also see uh, a, a grown-up man uh, with a family and, and taking on responsibility for for uh, for the environment where he's working and where he's where he's living. So it, it's uh, both yes and no. But I recognize him still. I think if you go out in Malmo and see youngsters, 8, 10 or whatever, playing football somewhere at the, the grass or uh, something like that. They, and you ask them, who are you? I'm Slatan. 
call it. There are also, of course, another side of that story that, that I mean, the children in this area, Rosengard, that teachers who are working with them are saying that they are not really working as hard in school because everybody wants to be like Zlatan instead of uh, working in school. So, I mean, there is a backside of the story also. How do you think your book has changed perceptions of him? Maybe abroad as much as... No, no, it changed. I think we don't remember now because, of course, he has more enemies before the book because people didn't understand him. But now, when they read about his childhood and understand how difficult he had, uh, they understand him more. And, and, and I've heard so much. I, I used to hate Slatan, but then I read the book and now I love him. <laughs> but the most important thing for me and for Slatan is that all these kids who never ever read the book who thought that books was the kind of most nerdiest thing. You know, they never went near a bookstore or a library. They are now reading. And that's beautiful, because in Sweden, as all over, we have a problem with these kids from the server. They don't read at all. They don't, the language is so poor. But now they start reading. So Slatan, I, used, I, I sometimes say that, absolutely, remember Slatan for all his fantastic goals and things he did on the plane. But maybe you should most of all remember Slatan for he was the guy who made Sweden to read. It's the same Slatan. It's a, it's a warm guy and it's also uh, interesting and also have many questions. He, he have uh, so interesting about the football team in Malmö and he also have some small projects when he we in Malmö working with a with a school in Rosengård and also Slatan dedicate his uh, story and his book to the to the children in the class in the Christmas present and and the children uh, read the book and uh, tell the stories to, to Slatan and get him back to to his career or so it's very warm and it's so interesting about the team in Malmö. I think it's beautiful because I, 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 I lecture a lot and I see all these kids from the suburbs and I see that Slatan means hope for them. Because of course they, they grow up and they think no, there's no way for us to get in the Swedish society. But then they see, but Slatan did. I can see he, 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 he really means hope. It's possible, it's possible, and that's beautiful. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, truly an icon in Sweden and beyond. Once again, he's a champion with PSG now, the sixth club he's won a league title with. He continues to prove that wherever you come from, you can succeed. He is Zlatan.